सदर नहीं आना था ना सदर आगे से बैठ जाए ये बहुत लाइट मारता है लॉन्ग शॉट में ठीक होता है लेकिन सोलो जो पुलवामा का वाक हुआ था चौदह फरवरी को उसके बाद हिंदुस्तान के जारहाना और इंतहा पसंदाना बयान ने इस पूरे खत्े में कशीदगी बहुत बढ़ा दी है और उसके साथ साथ मकबूसा कश्मीर में हिंदुस्तान ने खत भारत गरीब मार घाट और तबाही की रफ्तार को तेज तर कर दिया है पिछले चंद दिनों में ही 200 के करीब लोगों को गिरफ्तार कर लिया गया है आप सब ने देखा होगा कि हिंदुस्तान किस तरीके से जंग के शोरों को हवा दे रहा है और मजहबी इंतहा पसंदों के जरिए कश्मीरों हिंदुस्तान के मुसलमानों और पाकिस्तान को निशाना बनाने की कोशिश कर रहा है लोग कह रहे हैं कि हिंदुस्तान की हुक्मरान जमात बीजेपी आने वाले इंतबात में कामयाबी के लिए ऐसा कर रही है और मैं ये समझता हूँ कि ये बहुत ही गैर समाना इकदाम है कि इंतबात जीतने के लिए पूरे के पूरे खत्े को जंग की आग में धकेल दिया जाए हम ये समझते हैं और हक इसकी गवाही देंगे कि पुलवामा से बड़ी हकीकत कश्मीरों के ऊपर से मुसकम है उनके हकूक की पामारी है और हिंदुस्तान के इंसानियत के खिलाफ वो जराइम है जिनका वो कश्मीर में इंतजाम कर रहा है हम ये भी समझते हैं कि तमाम मसाइल की जड़ कश्मीरियों को उनका हक हाँ खुदरादियत न देना है हम समझते हैं कि इन तमाम का हक हाँ, मसाइल का हल ये है कि कश्मीर को आज़ादी दी जाए उनको अहल जम्मू कश्मीर को हक हाँ खुदरादियत दिया जाए और हिंदुस्तान मकबूजा कश्मीर में हकूक इंसानी की जो खिलाफ वर्जी कर रहा है उसको बंद करे और गुफ्त शदीद से मसाइल हल करें मसला कश्मीर का जैसे कि आप सब लोगों को मालूम है तीन फरीक हैं पाकिस्तान हिंदुस्तान और अहल जम्मू कश्मीर इनकी बहानी मुशावरत से सियासी और सफारती जराए से ही कोई मसले का हल ढूंढा जा सकता है हिंदुस्तान ने गुजशत इकहत्तर बरस में अस्करियत को आजमा लिया है रियासती दहशत गर्दी को आजमा लिया है लेकिन वो कश्मीरियों की आवाज़ बंद नहीं कर सके खत्म नहीं कर सके और उनको मबलूब नहीं कर सके हम ये भी कहते हैं कि हिंदुस्तान किसी किस्म की फौजी अस्करी मुहिम जो करने की गलती न करे जिससे पूरे का पूरा खत्ता जंग के शोर में जंग के शोर की लपेट में आ जाएगा और ये भी हिंदुस्तान को समझ लेना चाहिए कि वो अपनी ही भड़काई हुई आग में जलकर राख हो सकता है मौजूदा कशीदगी को ख़त्म करने के लिए और मैं समझता हूँ कि सफारतकारी मौजूद तरीन रास्ता करें ताकि वो पूरी सूरत हाल कर जायजा ले मेरे पास जो है इस वक्त जो है जो हमारी मोहतरम शख्सियत तशीर लाए हैं मेरे दाएँ तरफ बैठे हुए हैं मिस्टर बॉन्डेव उनके बहुत करीबी साथी और अजीज आमिर शेख साहब जो हैं वो मेरे बाएँ तरफ बैठे हुए हैं 
تو اس میں یہ ہے کہ یہ بہت ہی محترم شخصیت ہیں یہ وزیر خارجہ رہ چکے ہیں ناروے کے دو مرتبہ وزیر اعظم رہ چکے ہیں یہ سن انیس سو ستانوے سے لے کر دو ہزار تک ناروے کے وزیر اعظم تھے دو ہزار ایک سے دو ہزار پانچ تک کے دوبارہ وزیر اعظم بنے اور اس کے بعد یہ میرا خیال ہے کہ بڑی لمبی مدت کے لیے وزیر اعظم وہاں رہے ہیں اور اس کے علاوہ یہ پہلے جو ہے بھی پاکستان کا دورہ کر چکے ہیں لیکن میں آپ کو یہ بتاؤں کہ یہ اس وقت جو ہے آسلو سینٹر فار پیس اینڈ ہیومن رائٹس انہوں نے قائم کیا ہے اس کی انہوں نے بنیاد ڈالی ابھی بھی یہ ان کے جو ہے چیف ایگزیکٹو ہیں ایگزیکٹو ڈائریکٹر ہیں ان کے اور ایگزیکٹو چیئر ہیں اس کے یہ میں آپ کو تھوڑا سا پس منظر بتانا چاہتا ہوں کہ جو بارڈر ورک صاحب تھے یہ وہاں کے ایم پی سے ممبر آف پارلیمنٹ سے ملاقات ہوئی اور اس کے بعد یہ سری نگر تشریف لے گئے جہاں ان کی میر وائز عمر فاروق صاحب سے اور سید علی گیلانی صاحب سے ملاقات ہوئی ان کا ایک مشن ہے کہ یہ کسی طریقے سے خطے میں ام کے لیے کوشش کریں اور مسئلہ کشمیر کے حل کے لیے انہوں نے اپنی کوشش شروع کر دی ہیں ہم ان کا خیر مقدم کرتے ہیں ان کو یہاں پاکستان میں ایک مرتبہ پھر خوش آمدید کہتے ہیں اور میں اس کے ساتھ ہی جو ہے آئی ریکویسٹ پرائم منسٹر بانڈر ہوئے ٹو سپیک ٹو دا میڈیا تینکیو مسٹر پریسیڈنٹ لیٹ می سٹارٹ بائی تھینکنگ دا پریسیڈنٹ ٹو ٹو ریسیو اس اٹس اے گریٹ پلیشر ٹو بی بیک In, uh, in Pakistan, where I was also in November last year, and, uh, as uh, I understood was mentioned, I was also in Kashmir, both sides, and, and met the president up there. Just as a brief background, after I stepped down as Prime Minister of Norway in 2005, I founded the Oslo Center. And we are working for peace, for democracy, for human rights with projects in several countries. Uh, I became uh, engaged in the Kashmir issue a couple of years ago. Uh, also uh, to people living in Norway from uh, Pakistan and from uh, Kashmir. And uh, I'm, when I'm engaged, it is not on behalf of the Norwegian government, but it is on my own behalf and as executive chair of the Oslo Center. We know that this is the longest lasting conflict in Asia and uh, people are suffering. Uh, and especially over the last days, the situation has escalated uh, and uh, may be dangerous. Uh, we know the background for that uh, with the last uh, terror incident in Kashmir, which I condemn. Uh, but this is also a new example that violence is not appropriate means to solve this conflict. There is no military solution to the Kashmir conflict. The only sustainable solution is a political settlement. I very well understand the strong reactions against the terror incident. But sooner or later, the parties concerned must meet for a dialogue. And uh, I will encourage the prime ministers, both of India and, and of Pakistan, to restrain from any escalation that can be dangerous to calm down the situation and to start a process for a peaceful solution. I also have some contact uh, to, the, to India, which was mentioned here, with, especially with uh, my friend Shishi Dabi Shankar. Uh, and uh, I want to keep the channels open uh, both ways. And, uh, It's time, highly timely now to, to try to have channels 
for uh, the leaders, both in India and Pakistan, but also in Kashmir, because they must also be on board uh, to find a peaceful settlement. People deserve it. It cannot go on as it is doing now. And therefore, I also mean that uh, the international community must uh, increase its engagement. I welcome statements from international leaders. And we know there are several UN resolutions, and there is a recent uh, report half a year ago about uh, from the UN Human Rights Council, uh, uh, Council uh, and Special Representative about the human uh, rights situation in uh, Kashmir. And I think this must be followed up. We know that uh, there also has been a previous uh, agreement between India and Pakistan, and India is emphasizing that now, that this is a bilateral issue. Fine, but, but if it's a bilateral issue, it should be taken initiative to meet bilaterally and, uh, and to find a solution. So that's what I will encourage the leaders uh, to do. And uh, once again, I thank the President for taking time and let me get an insight in your assessment of, uh, of the situation. Thank you so much, Prime Minister Bonderwick. And uh, if there are any questions, Mr. Prime Minister, what do you think about the activities of the terrorist activities, what's the difference between the terrorist activities and the freedom fighters activities? The world is mixing these things because they are fighting against the freedom. And if you kill my mother, if you kill my father, if I do something, it is not called a terrorist activity because the attack was not on the innocent people, it was attack on the military, and military is killing my mothers and fathers and daughters. What's your comments, please? Well, as I said, just, okay, one more. سارے جو ہیں اقدامات خوش آئے ہیں لیکن 
ये काफी नहीं है अब जो बैन अवी बरदरी को और खासतौर से जो उनकी हुकूमतें हैं वो अमेरिका बरतानिया और फ्रांस की हों या रूस और चीन की हों ये सारे के सारे मुस्तकिल अरकान हैं सलामती काउंसिल के इनको आगे बढ़ के इस मसले को हल करवाने की कोशिश करनी चाहिए ख़ासतौर से अकवा मतहदा को उनको एक खसूस नुमाइंदा मुकर करना चाहिए एक दो तीन चीज़ें जो इन्होंने कही हैं वो मैं थोड़ा सा बताना चाहता हूँ और मैं उनकी तोसीक भी करता हूँ इन्होंने ये कहा है कि मसला कश्मीर का कोई अस्करी हल नहीं है और ये हम भी कहते हैं यानी अहर जम्मू कश्मीर कहते हैं पाकिस्तान कहता है उन्होंने दूसरा ये कहा है कि फ्रीटेन के दरमियान का अलाव होना चाहिए बिल्कुल ज़रूरी है और पाकिस्तान और हिंदुस्तान को इन्होंने ये कहा है अपील की है कि किसी भी तरीके से कोई ऐसा तरीका इस्तेमाल करें पुरम सियासी और सफारती तरीका ताकि हालात बिगड़ने ना पड़ें और पुरम हल की कोशिश की जाए मसल कश्मीर के बिलखसूस और इनके हिंदुस्तान में भी रबते हैं और ये उनसे भी मतलब ये कहेंगे कि सूरत हाल को ठंडा करने की कोशिश की जाए इसे इस तरीके से जो है एक से जो एस्केलेशन की तरफ ना ले जा रहा है इन्होंने कहा है कि इस वक्त जो है वक्त का तकाजा ये है कि कोई ऐसे चैनल तलाश तलाश किए जाए कि हम सूरत हाल को बिगड़ने से बचा सकें और जैसा कि मैंने पहले कहा इनका भी यही कहना है कि इंटरनेशनल कम्यूनिटी को अपना किरदार अदा करना चाहिए और ख़ास तौर क्योंकि इनका कि यू एन की करारदादे मौजूद कश्मीर के सिलसिले में और यू एन की रिपोर्ट भी जिसका भी मैंने थोड़ी देर पहले हवाला दिया तो आखिरी जो नुकता इनका था वो बहुत अहम था वो कह रहे हैं कि हिंदुस्तान ये कहता है कि ये दो तरफा मामला है तो ये कह रहे हैं बफर्ज महाल अगर मान भी किया जाए कि ये दो तरफा है तो उस सूरत में भी कम अज़ कम जो है मुजाक तो शुरू होने चाहिए उनको बातचीत तो होनी चाहिए तो और तो सवाल आप जो जी आप Kashmir issue, particularly from uh, uh, you have repeatedly uh, mentioned that. Uh, but do you not think that uh, there is a dire need that there should be a permanent desk on Kashmir in Pakistan's foreign affairs ministry, uh, which can deal and have linkages across the world with uh, all embassies, and embassies should also have some sort of Kashmir cell in that. so that uh, kashmir uh, issue must have to be highlighted across the world without any distinction that whether the kashmiris are uh, uh, living in that particular country or not because that is very important to knock the door in every capital to uh, raise this issue because this is the high time to uh, resolve this particular issue because south asia is not right now at the tipping point of war how do you see it Well, you made a suggestion, and uh, I think this is a very <coughs> popular demand from the people across uh, uh, Pakistan, and uh, Kashmiris also make this demand from time to time. And I think that this uh, demand should be addressed to the Foreign Ministry of Pakistan and to the State of Pakistan. Uh, but let me tell you that uh, uh, when we say that there should be a special envoy of the Secretary General. Uh, it has no correlation with the desk kashmir desks at the foreign uh, of, of our embassies uh, or when we say that there should be a special rapporteur uh, uh, to be appointed by either the the human rights council or by the office of the high commissioner for human rights these are legitimate demands because uh, kashmir is burning they are massive human rights violations there and now the developments in kashmir and around kashmir uh, threaten regional peace and security and uh, the actions taken by the indian government or the statements given by them they are pushing the region uh, to to war and therefore you need these envoys or rapporteurs who can diffuse the situation deescalate the situation <coughs> as far as the advocacy of the kashmir cause is concerned even if there are no kashmir desks their ambassadors are there and uh, the ambassadors are equipped and empowered to uh, raise the voices for the realization of the right to the self determination of the people of jammu and kashmir there is no deficiency in this regard but uh, 
and your point is well taken that more efforts uh, can be made to reinforce the diplomatic apparatus that we have. So, uh, my question is uh, from uh, the former Most welcome again to Pakistan, first of all. Uh, it's just recently after the Bulwama incident, uh, uh, Indian military in its press conference, a high level uh, military officer in a press conference, he has stressed that the uh, government has given them free hand uh, of any sort of violence within occupied territory, Indian occupied territory, and uh, they are now initiating the genocide. Official statement was made by the Indian military of genocide of the Kashmiri people, and after that we have seen that uh, the extremist Hindu factions, they were burning the properties of uh, the Kashmiris, they were burning people alive, and now they have started genocide across Delhi and into other parts of Jammu. How do you particularly see this type of aspect from Indian democracy? I will, of course, not judge between India and Pakistan, but I will appeal to both parties to restrain from uh, any actions that will escalate the conflict and make it even more dangerous than it is already. Uh, as I said, violence in any or another way is not a solution. And uh, therefore I think there is a heavy responsibility to the two prime ministers to stand up, calm down the situation and uh, be open for a, a dialogue. Thank you. Three questions, last three questions. Mm -hmm. sir, I'm Ali Jabir from APP. Oh, could you please? Uh, I'm Ali Jabir from APP, sir. Uh, my question is to you, sir. Uh, after the Pulwama attack, the reaction of Modi regime, their media, and now, after a few days, now what we read in the Hindustan Times or other newspapers, they claim it to be a concocted one. They just tried to demonize the Pakistan government and their forces that they were involved in that incident. Sir, uh, my question is, uh, why don't the Kashmiri people, the Kashmiri uh, people who are uh, you know, raising the uh, Kashmiri flight across the world, why don't they make the world realize about the Indian real face behind their propaganda films, how they are demonizing the freedom movement as terrorist movement? Indirectly, we have seen that they are involved behind those incidents. Why not instead, uh, along with the human rights violations, we should apprise the world about their uh, you know, negative role in those violence, their indirect involvement in those violence incidents, and then blaming on them on the Kashmiri youths, particularly, and then on Pakistan, sir. Uh, that was my question. Thank you. Hey, uh, uh, now, the southern way, the Kenna Jomba cake came from Medan, who Shaki Medan, who Sassi Medan, who Ya Azadi, who Ya. Kashmiriyo ka haqe khuzara diyat azadi ho ya us mein big three ho ya koi bhi silsila ho us mein Hindustan humare khilaaf chalta hai jaysa kya aapne apni speech pe bhi firmaya ke bhoot sari insaniyat ho ki alwi tanzimo ne mil kar ke us se kail kar de ki bhi koshish ki lekin ab us ke bawajud bhi ab Palwama ka drama jo hai wo phir khira gaya hai ab kya ju anmo ko bhoot dafa kaha ja chuka sattar saalo se hum apne bhen bhaiyo ke khandam walo ki laash ho tha rhe क्या जो साबित होती है जब चावाई हुए हैं आपने बताया कि उस लोग में इन्होंने इंसानी उपयोग से कंजीव भी टाइम किया एक्स फ्रॉम द इंडियन साइड एस आई सेड आई वांट टू बी न्यूट्रल आई वांट टू हैव चैनल्स टू बोल साइड्स एंड कंसेक्वेंटली आई कैन नॉट जज व्हाट इज डन फ्रॉम द वन और द अदर साइड � and I said that is not a solution, it's an appeal from me to both sides uh, to restrain from that, to calm down. With regard to the UN, uh, we know that there has been several UN resolutions during the years and last June we got a report about the human rights situation uh, from the UN Human Rights High Commissioner. Uh, and there is also a report from a group of members of parliament in uh, UK uh, and I think it is a clear documentation that human rights abuses are taking place in Kashmir, no doubt. 
uh, India is emphasizing this is a bilateral issue. But as I said, if it is, okay, fine. But then it must be taken initiatives to get the bilateral dialogue. And as long as that is not uh, the case, I think that the international community also has to be engaged. Uh, now we have seen statements from international leaders over the last days, also from the US uh, president. And I welcome more engagement uh, also from the, the UN. And uh, I myself, I'm only acting on behalf of my own. I, I will try to contribute to get focus on the Kashmir uh, issue because the tragedy that this conflict has been going on for so many years. It should be possible to let it come to an end. Responding to your question, I would say that uh, uh, Mr. Van der Beek is uh, a statesman of international stature. Uh, he is neutral, impartial, but he is interested in resolving the Jammu and Kashmir dispute and to make intervention personally and through his centre, the Oslo Centre, to uh, put an end to the human rights violations in the Indian occupied Kashmir. So we appreciate his efforts, which he is making. Uh, and uh, we will support his efforts. In fact, I mean, uh, let's hope that uh, uh, channels on Pakistani side and Indian side remain open to Mr. Bonner. And uh, he can uh, make peace in the region and create conditions for building peace, which is the aspiration of the people of Pakistan, India, and the people of Jammu and Kashmir. One thing that I want to clarify here in English, I think this was a question which was asked repeatedly, and you started this uh, conversation. There is no terrorism, I want to say very categorically, that there is no terrorism in the Indian occupied Kashmir, that uh, millions of Kashmiris uh, believe that there is a political movement. This is uh, a movement towards realization of their fundamental rights and their fundamental freedoms. And uh, it's a disputed territory. The people of the occupied Kashmir have to determine their future, their political future. And their preference is that this future should be determined in accordance with the UN Security Council resolutions. <laughs> they should be implemented. And the United Nations should step forward. Uh, all these uh, d developments that take place from time to time uh, they are there because uh, the root cause has not been addressed, and the root cause is denial of the right to self determination to the people of Jammu and Kashmir. So the Kashmiris do not believe in terrorism. They do not endorse or support terrorism. There is a peaceful movement and they have vowed that peacefully they would be able to get their rights. So, I want to say that in Urdu, I want to say that Kashmir is not a problem with Kashmir. So, the question of the question is, thank you very much. My question is, thank you very much. So, I want to say that I want to say that thank you very much. And I want to thank Mr. Bonderwick for being here and Ayur Sheikh for joining us. Thank you so much.